All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to, I guess, is a special edition of Rassle Rock. I'm not sure how to, uh, how to go. I'm just going to go with the, like, this is pretty much an interview with Eddie Valentine here because Eddie texted me earlier today, very upset uh, about some, uh, some certain matches that are going on in the world of professional wrestling today. Right now, he's not upset because he gets to show off his guns. Sorry. What's going on, Eddie? How you doing? Wait, you texted me about this. Did I? Well, if you, <laughs> you didn't, didn't text me, about, why would you text you about? then who, if, if you didn't set this up, then who did? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just, uh, I don't know. We've all taken too many chair shots to the head. I, I, I was I was really hoping for an Omni-Man run in there, but that would be perfect. <laughs> So there's a uh, a certain match that just happened uh, involving someone that we know very well, Nick Gage, uh, on AEW with Chris Jericho. And uh, the match is, of course, getting lots and lots of press, um, both good and bad, I think. Uh, did you guys, you both, both of you guys get a chance to see this match? Yes. Yep, I watched it. My brain's been melting down ever since I saw it. So you had some you had some thoughts on this match, Eddie. What do you what do you what do you think of good old uh, good old Nick? <laughs> well, I mean, before we even get like into that, like it just watching, I don't know that it's it's mind blowing to me, brain melting to me watching Nick Gage wrestle Chris Jericho with <laughs> light tubes. And pizza cutters. And, I mean, just, you got to think back 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Would you, if anybody had ever even, like, brought that up or suggested that would ever happen in a million million years. years. No. You would would laugh. You would laugh about (laughs) it, like a joke, because it would just never... Like it never would have happened. It really? just got my brain I, I, thinking about no, I about like made the same, I probably made that match happen in like No Mercy or something. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> but I never, I never thought that match ever happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure a bunch of CZW creator wrestlers have fought Chris Jericho, but not not even even then without the light tubes because they would they didn't. What game were you? I didn't have them. Where you create a wrestling Nick Gage and hitting Chris Jericho with light tubes, you didn't. Dude, the the um, the. Can I just? I want to comment on the the fantastic timing of the Domino's ad, where they had a pizza cutter cutting a pizza right after the shot <laughs> where he where, <laughs> right over right over uh, Jericho's head. Like, I think actor, somebody I, read. Oh I think God. somebody, somebody, somebody <laughs> read controversy creates cash one too many times. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Domino is like issued a statement, and they were like, "We do not stand by what that stuff was." Well, right. no, duh. Like, yeah. who's no company? Like, so, like just the circumstance. First of all, they're a laughing stock. Secondly, like they're kind of in this position too that they look like the party poopers, like with the with I, I it is the the convergence, the merging of dimensions of CZW ultra violence with mainstream professional wrestling is absolutely insane. It was never intended to be that way, ever. No. And it just got it just got my brain thinking about like like early combat zone when we were there and everything blew up and got crazy and the circumstances mm-hmm. that led up to that and now we're in a timeline where Nick Gage is throwing taped up uh leg tubes and smashing them into Chris Jericho's face and cutting him up with a piece of butter. Yeah. This is the world we live in now, folks. Mm. So, that is yeah, it definitely brought me. it definitely brought deathmatch into the mainstream because that this happened on network television. This was, you know, 
I, I, as far as I know, that's never happened before. Why? Why is it on national television? But it does it never a wrestling fan love death match. Ne- but is it's that all, what it is now? IWC. Okay, think about this. Think yeah. about this. We're at the point now where wrestling, pro mainstream pro wrestling, is trying to uh, get the death match market. Well, yeah. AEW. Is that where we're at? Is that where we're at now? 20 years ago, none of those guys would have touched us with a 50-foot pole or going anywhere near any of us. I don't think it's so much that they want to get into the, the, the death match game. I think it's just Nick Gage is a name that a lot of these uh, internet wrestling fans know. And they thought uh, they, they know him for being this, this death match guy. And to see Nick Gage versus Chris Jericho is a draw, at least for them. That seems to be AEW's uh, bread and butter right there. To get the people that are tired of WWE and, and you know, companies yeah. like that not listening to the fans. Yeah, line in the sands sort of, sort of stuff. I'm not knocking mm. them or bringing him in. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not even. And it is trying to get a hold of their market because the just the fact that they brought him in. Nick Gage is known yeah. for one thing, one thing only, and that's like ultra violent wrestling. That's what he made his name under, right? Yeah. Either will think I'm. You know, I'm not slagging no, him. Right. I, and I'll. I will preface this as I say, as as far as because I don't want it to seem like I'm just sitting here burying Nick Gage. Though I will do not that later, but not for the reasons that. You <laughs> make that okay? okay, it's not for wrestling. Because I've okay. had, uh, every time I've ever gotten in the ring with Nikki, it was great. Him and him and Nate Hatred, it was a, a those are some of my best tag matches. Were were me and uh, Dahmer against against Nikki and Nate. Every time we got in the ring mm-hmm. with them, it was awesome. So I know, I, like I know Nikki can go and he could wrestle because I had great matches with him. So I'm not yeah. slagging his. I'm not gonna bury him as a wrestler. I'm not gonna bury. The fact that he does deathmatch wrestling, that's where he makes his money. You know, and mm-hmm. if I had a problem with that, I want to work for the company in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, what the hell? So I'm not going to judge him for any of that. But that, right. that is grabbing at that market that w- would never be touched and, in my opinion, shouldn't be touched by mainstream professional wrestling for many mm-hmm. reasons. And it was terrible presentation like if you were gonna bring nick gage in and have him do that they did it horribly horribly bad location I, bad timing I like it, was, it was a tremendous waste, tremendous waste of nick gage yeah to build something it, yeah like, well it's like you you knew it's the what the one of the one of the five labors of jericho and it's like oh so you're just like just some some quick notch like it seems like a big f you it seems like it seems almost like a pity spot and it almost feels like it's it's weird because i'm kind of torn torn about my thoughts on it in, on uh i really think it, it has it says a lot about the the popularity of gcw i think it says a lot about the popularity of gcw and gcw took all of the fans that ccw once had and and grew that fan base Hey, well, yeah, because, because, no, no, because CW. Game Changer Wrestling. Game Changer oh, Wrestler. Game, okay. Game Changer Wrestling is the spiritual successor to CZW. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it is that gotcha. audience. It's the mm-hmm. it, it, that's the old CZW right. audience. But, like, but if right, I've right, ever seen they're it, big, they're bigger again. They were way bigger. Yeah, yeah, but even then, we're the talking about uh, we're we're still talking about a very niche market that is what in in the world let's be generous like a hundred thousand maybe perhaps be yeah. fair people who are tuning in to watch aew because like they're they're already watching it anyway like they're it's right it's not something it's not something they wouldn't already be have you know recorded and are watching already anyway well they didn't bring them in in philly which is why and that's where he would have gotten his reaction that he feeds off of to begin with. I think mm. that threw him off 
Number two, he's working with Chris Jericho, and it was probably like like with the reputation that Nikki's built, I'd be shocked if they didn't like you know like like hey don't do anything to within ultraviolet reason oh, <laughs> to mess up Chris Jericho. Yeah, you know you don't want to be go. Having said that, Nikki's pile driver is still one of the best I've ever seen. His pile driver is sick. It is nice. great. That was the best part. That was the best part of that match. Pile drive to Chris Jericho in glass. Yeah. Well, we knew this wasn't going to be the David Arquette fight with uh, you know slicing him all up until Arquette just walks out. Yeah, but then why are you bringing him in? Because that's what people are going to expect. They're going to expect him mm. to go after him like he did David Arquette. They're going to. Mm. It should have been in Philly. He should have been the last guy. If you were going to do this. He should have been the last guy on the ride to facing MJF. Absolutely. And he should have been presented as this insane, psychotic, murderous felon that could possibly kill Chris Jericho. And I didn't at no point during the match feel any sort of way that Chris Jericho was in danger from Nick Gage. And that makes me a sad, sad Eddie Valentine inside my heart because Jericho should have been in fear for his life in that mm. match. That's how it's over. Well, they, didn't, they, didn't, they definitely didn't build it up enough. No, uh, it, was a, it was a week long build. Um, again, it, it's, it's, it's an indie darling thing. Uh, you know, the, the bringing in the God, Corey, how much do you think he got paid? Like, Probably a decent he, amount. He probably got he probably got a good payday just out of that one spot. I'm, I'm, I'm have, happy as hell for him. Like I am too. Sincerely happy. Like get, get everything you're worth, man. Like if you if you got somebody willing to pay, it, take it, dude. For sure. I never thought I'd see it. Like good for Nikki. Right. Great for Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> like like. <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm like, 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 like any one of us would have like ever turned it down in a million years. It's just. No, oh, you, yeah. I'm just I'm, thinking back 20 just, years ago. So 2001 CZW, like when I got there and what we did, and like, and then a few days ago, I saw Nick Cage throw light tubes and break them in Chris Jericho's face. Like, that's insane. <laughs> that, that's. Yeah, especially, especially take Jericho took that stack of tubes on his head. Like, he he was took taking tubes right to the top of his head, like that's that was that was something you would have never thought you'd ever see. No. Well, I mean, I mean, clearly Chris Jericho is having a midlife crisis. I think we've all we all understand that now, right? Yeah. I mean, can we agree on that? Death matches his side chick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Jericho can still go for for a. A guy that's in his fifties, I think he's he's doing very well. Um, and if this is, you know, people are still cheering for him, so I say, why not go for it? He's not hurting as long as he doesn't get hurt. That's, that's the whole thing. That's why the death match thing kind of took me by surprise. Yeah, but it sucked. Sucked for a death match, or just sucked for for wrestling? It's it's the worst match I've ever seen Nikki have. Oof. That's a little rough. I mean, it's you know. I'm, prove me uh, wrong. I, mean, I, I you, dare anybody to pull out a Nick Gage match that looked worse than that one. Mm. That way, like he didn't have his fire, he didn't have his intensity. They should have been in Philadelphia, where it was his crowd, and he should have came out like a like Nicky, like know? like gonna kill him. And he did yeah. not look at any point like he was gonna murder Chris yeah. Jericho. And his thing is murder, death, kill. And I want to see yeah. the real Nick Gage please stand up. And go out there and murder, try to murder Chris Jericho in the ring, which is why you would mm. book him. Yeah, that's a, that's a solid point that not across what the board. But yeah, like you, you said before, you know somebody grabbed him beforehand. It's like, all right, you calm the hell down, Mister. This is Chris Jericho. This is AEW. This isn't GCW or you know some some bingo hall. He gonna be wrestling in, you know. I mean, it was like PG Nick Gage. I just... Yeah. I'd never seen him like that. But here's the other thing, too. Nicky's older. 
he's like our age. Mm -hmm. You know, he's put his body through hell and back and hell and back and. Well, hell. I don't think that would have anything to do with it, because I, I guarantee you he's going to go out and still do the same thing he was doing before this. Yeah, dude, well, and, and have those better death matches. <sighs> he's doing better for making a name for himself and making money in wrestling than he's ever made before. Yeah. yeah. So, like, he was he had his own Beyond Behind the Ring or Dark Side of the Ring episode. Like, he he's the most relevant he's ever ever been. So, yeah. Uh, I I don't know how much time they had to call that match, but maybe they need a little more. I think they just wasted. I think he had way more to offer. If you're if you're bringing him in, he had way more to offer. Yeah. Do you well, think, it will, yeah, do, you think like, we'll, do you think we'll see him again? There's a I doubt it. They might they might I save it. it. They'll just do it like another like a like a just a spectacle like a once once every once in a while spectacle thing. Why can't AEW get things fight. right on the first try? <laughs> they never can Seriously. with anybody. No, with I know. anybody. It's, it's frustrating. It's like Miro <laughs> is doing great now, but when they first brought him in, he was you know, he was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a, it's the same thing. Uh, but they do they do more. really well eventually. Yeah, <laughs> eventually yeah, down the line they, they do okay. Uh. You know. But uh, yeah, man. I mean, if 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 they bring him in again, great. Uh, hopefully they can do it a little bit better. But for this, this was like what the the second labor of Chris Jericho, and they're bringing in Hoovy next week. Which it seemed it seemed like, why? Why does it even that, that does it matter? Like Jericho, okay, Hoovy Joe Guerrero is not more relevant or better than Nick Gage. Nick Gage mm -hmm. is here. Nick Gage is your top tier thing, like not your not your second labor of something because it's like then you know that there's something right after it. It's almost like a story that that like gives you the last page first. Mm -hmm. Well, he the what was the the challenge for next week is he has to beat Hoover to Guerrero with a move off the top rope. Yeah, yep. that's the labor. That's the gimmick. He has yeah. to beat Hoover to Guerrero with a move off the top rope. Well, he just gave Nikki a top rope her and Karana through a plain glass. Yeah. In the match, so, you know so why, you why is it a problem for like? Does anybody <laughs> think Chris Jericho can't beat somebody with a move off the top rope? Absolutely not. Right. So, so right. I, I don't. I didn't. I didn't say it made sense. I just said that I, this is what I they're doing. They pretty much gave us with the finishing. Yeah, this is the match, and this is the finish. Please tune in. <laughs> 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 so yeah. No, you, you, you want to know you want to how you book you want to know how you book the swerve. Hmm. What, how do you, how do you how book the swerve? The second, the second, the second. Uh, Chris Jericho puts Hoovitude into any kind of hold whatsoever or pin. Just lose. Hoovy loses purposely, and then MJF <laughs> comes in the ring and gives him money. Pays them all. <laughs> there you go. That's now the Eddie's calling move. the finish. That's right. Guerrero. <laughs> every time the rope, every time Jericho brings him near the ropes, he's like, "No, not near the corner. No, <laughs> <laughs> away from that. Well, mm -mm. Nope, not going to the corner. I won't do it." <laughs> constantly trying to. Constantly, Hoovitu could lose by any means necessary and completely ruin. <laughs> Chris Jericho's day. He could just walk out of the ring and take a count out. Chris Jericho yep. loses the labors of Jericho. There's a lot of logic holes in this. Why, if you're MGF and you're bringing in Juventud Guerrero to he like, and Jericho has to beat him with a move off the top rope, you just pay him to lose by any other way. Unless MJF is dumb. And I don't think that's how we want to portray MJF. But, like, this is all towards building a match between Jericho and MJF. And I don't care to see that. I don't, it doesn't, I don't care. 
I don't care about MJF. MJF is uh, he's just he's a, he's the thing. He's an imitation of a thing I've seen a thousand times. I, I, I want to see. I want to. I want to see MJF versus Nikki. There we go. There's your. <laughs> there you go. Let's have that match against who? <laughs> against Nikki. Against Nikki. I did, I still didn't hear who that was. Nick Gage. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. the guy that we've been talking about. <laughs> so let's let's. All right. Okay. So do we want to talk? Do we do we want to start going into CZW history? See how far we got. Yeah, for for those watching who don't know who Eddie Valentine is, uh, he trained both Corey Castle and myself in CZW, uh, and the man right here, he's uh, the gold Everybody edition, if you will. What's that? <laughs> Everybody knows that. No, <laughs> not everybody knows who we are. <laughs> I know. Everybody who knows who we are knows who he is. And uh, let's all start from go. birth. <laughs> at six years old i was born without a face it's a very tragic tale uh, <laughs> uh no but eddie, eddie when did you come into season w was it 2000 or 2001 it was 2001 mm-hmm. and all i'll preface was, this with it was, jan- it was january january 2001 delaware reinvasion as corey calls it Invasion. re yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was in a, uh, a handicap tough. match. Right? Handicap match. Uh, Jay and Mark Briscoe and uh, Trent Acid, right? Yes. Well, leading yes. up into this, it, it was like, well, this is a weird time for CZW, too, because this was when we had a... There was a big influx of talent. Between... Yeah. Uh, like during 2000 and into 2001, there were a bunch of us that were wrestling for Pennsylvania Championship Wrestling and ECWA and uh, Jersey All Pro. And like me, Amondo, and Ty Street. Who else came over from PCW? ECWA, Bra- uh, the Briscoe brothers, obviously. Uh, right. Um, Lord was it was uh, like? <laughs> I think Burke Let's Burke and Bar came in around that time. No, Burke was in before that, or Burke earlier. Was in the- was Burke there from the Burke beginning? Was in there, like from the very beginning, yeah, yeah. Okay. But guys started coming in in like 2000 from there. Like Pennsylvania Championship Wrestling shut down. And mm-hmm. that left the ECWA. And like Lane with Pennsylvania Championship Wrestling was running. Oh, man. He was running like at least two or three times a month. And Kendra was running once a month. So just between the two of them, you had four bookings like a mm-hmm. month. And then PCW shut down and Kendra only worked, only booked once a month. But there were a bunch of us there that left because uh, it, uh, Kettner had a no CZW policy. That I think John oh, adopted really? a no ECWA policy too. Like afterwards, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Kettner wouldn't. Uh, you had you had to choose. Kettner didn't yeah, want anybody working no, for him no, and no, for no, ECWA. No, else That's crazy. I never understood why people do that. That's yeah. uh, that's so. Well, you I gotta understand that, that very much. at the at the time, like I worked for Jim and Blaine for PCW and ECWA in two ninety nine and two thousand, hmm. and at the time that was uh, peak, what like Attitude Era, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And we were two of the promotions that were like Kevin Kelly was at all our shows. There were. Uh, we were working. This was one guy, WWF guys, could take indie bookings for select companies. And ECW and ECWA were two of those companies. So mm-hmm. I remember when I first started wrestling for PCW and Blaine, like I, the first name that I worked there was uh, Dwayne Gill, who was doing Gilberg at the time. Right. And I had a match with him, and I, he loved working with me. So after that, I was like golden with him i've worked i worked him a bunch of times and then i started getting spots with other names like uh chris daniels and Flamini and jimmy valiant and king Kong bundy and i got the the commonwealth 
playing game of the Commonwealth uh, Championship, which was like the IC title. Uh, I got to work that feud with with uh, that program with Mondo, which got us both over. I got Mondo a job and <laughs> CZW. <laughs> Very cool. So, like, like that went away. That was what I was used to. And Kentner ran. He wanted a job in the Fed in the worst possible way. He ran his shows exactly like a Raw or SmackDown on an indie mm -hmm. level, with like the promos and the angles and the screen and the the building was perfect. Like he ran those those. He wanted a job in the office in the worst way. So all of his shows were ran structurally like a WWE show. So like uh, okay. before we all started working for CZW, me and Mondo, while we were feuding in PCW, Kettner had us as a tag team in ECWA. And we were supposed to work Trent and Johnny in a program like it, it was supposed to be like me and Mondo were supposed to be his Christian and Edge against the backseat Hardy Boys or flip that however you like. But uh, yeah. that was the gimmick. Like we were gonna get a big push. It was supposed to be like a months long program that ended in a ladder match, and that never happened because uh, Trent and Johnny started working for John and mm. Kentner told him like pick like you like you can't work you, i don't want you working for czw and me so and they picked czw and then mondo went to czw and then i i was like and then i was stuck in ecwa without pcw and i had heat mm -hmm. with kettner and i now had no program because all the people that i was working with in this program that was supposed to take up the next year and end up in this big ladder match with, which i'm sure would have gotten a lot of press at the mm -hmm. time, like you know, at one of the at one of his big shows, you know, and that all went away. And mm -hmm. they were this now. They were telling me come to Mondo and Trent and Johnny were all like come to CZW. I was like okay, so I was like sending John tapes of like me and Mondo, and he like started like booking Mondo, and uh, I don't know. Somebody must have said something to him, but they like I finally got a call from John. They told me to come down for a tryout. So I was trying out down at the school in Deptford uh -huh. at the dojo. What the what the hell were we calling it back then? I don't remember. Was was it the, the, the Mantua place? place? The the was Deptford this Mantua place. or was this was this the Cheer Tech? Whatever it was. Cheer Tech. Cheer Tech. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, was it, I think it was just CCW Training Academy, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When they went to dojo or whatever the hell. Dojo. Well, we, we, yeah, they they started doing that in like 2012 or 13 or something. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> dojo. It's the dojo. DJ so we need it up a little bit. No. Yeah, DJ's so like, bow to your sensei. sensei. This, this is the first time I met. This is the first time I met John. Uh, so I come down. I go down to the the. The CCW school. Now I'm like at the point where okay, I've given up on WWF. Like that okay. is that dream's over. They told me I was the wrong size. PCW shut down. That was my best connect to get in there. Mm -hmm. Was through Pennsylvania Championship Wrestling or ECWA, and then like ECWA was that was a no go at that point. And I was like, well, I can't grow a foot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would have taken four inches, just four inches yeah. of height, you know, like, I was like, you can't hide that with, like, lifts. So it was just like, well, I'm just going to wrestle how I want and try and get over to Japan and, you know, just do whatever, like, try and try something else, you right. know, a different style, like, or, like, do the stuff that I wanted to do and how I wanted to wrestle and CZW seemed like the place for that. But I was still gimmicked up, like, for WWF when I first came in right. with the gold right. and black. That was my old, like, PCW, ECWA, Fast Eddie Valentine gear when I had Beth Phoenix on my arm, you know, right. like Jaguar and shit. And, they're like, like, that yeah. all worked. It did not so they, in CZW. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, 
did, did not John work. have a problem with this? The with the with the well, way no, you were no, doing I got, no, 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 no. This is this was my tryout. It's the worst tryout I ever had, hmm. and I'm going to explain to you exactly why it was the worst tryout I ever had. Okay, <laughs> okay. so I get there, I meet John. You know John, how John is. Yeah. You know, like you know, like it's <laughs> John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just grouchy John, you know. <laughs> so, and Chris is there. I forget who else is there. I, I can't remember if Trent and Johnny were there. I don't, like, I remember, like, Chris was there. Immediate, immediate dislike. Immediate. Immediate. Before he even speaks. Huh? He didn't, he didn't, no, they didn't, didn't like you? No, no, no. I did not like Chris right off the bat. Oh, okay. Chris meaning Just, Justice Payne, right? Yes, yes, Justice okay. Payne. I'll just say Justice Payne. Sorry. Okay. So <laughs> Justice Payne. So it would make this easier for everybody. I'll just, I'll just use, I'll just use everybody's. Uh, yeah, use the real names. Real names. <laughs> Nick, Nick, Gage's names. Brother. Nick Gage's brother. Nick Gage's brother, <laughs> Justice Payne, and I yeah. did not like him right off the bat. He seemed like a prick. Yeah. Like major attitude. I don't think he cared for me at all. Like he definitely like had an attitude problem, <coughs> which did not ever improve in all the time that I knew Justice Payne. And, you know, it's a tryout. So he, he, he asked me, what spots do I do? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> what spots? Now what moves? Not, uh, you know, your level of... Not, uh... I had never... Any time I ever did a tryout for anybody prior to this, it was based on a match you had. Yeah. So I've done tryouts where I've gone in and, and had a match with somebody. And that was mm -hmm. the tryout. So you call a match, you go in, you have a match, and, you know, like, that's they can see you work. Right? Yeah. No. So what happened? Not here? in CZW, not in the CZW Wrestling Academy with Justice Payne. That is not how tryouts work. Tryouts work in the CZW Wrestling Academy under Justice Payne, where he asks you what spots you do. And then you're just supposed to do random high spots with this guy that you don't know from Adam, who's like like just apparently he's a big shot here. <laughs> so like like I like I, I I knew he was like a guy in the company. That was it. That mm -hmm. was the extent of my knowledge of Justice Payne at the gotcha. time. I've never worked him. Never saw him work. Like and it's like, hey, what are your spots? Like I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I do. I I have wrestling matches. So, you know, it sucked. It sucked. We went yeah. in and tried to do a couple spots, and it was just like. You know, I can tell you, like, like, oh, like, this guy sucks or whatever. And it's just like, dude, you just want me to do high spots with you. I don't even know you. Like, <laughs> like what, what crazy <laughs> things do you think I'm going to do with you randomly out of the middle of nowhere without, a, a, like, this is the first time we ever even looked at each other. And you want me to yeah. do some crazy thing to pop I John? I think the, the, the thing was, like, I'm taking this off. So kill my eyes. <laughs> Let me let me preface this by saying, I love Justice Payne. Chris, he he he, he was a tremendous uh, inspiration to me, and he helped me out, and he like taught me how to lift weights. I love the guy, and he always he encouraged me. I always really liked it. Um, but he had an ego on him that you couldn't tell him you didn't know who he was. He probably already assumed you knew who he was, like in his head. He was that big of a deal. So you probably already mm -hmm. knew. You were probably lucky to be there running spots with him because he's a big deal. Oh yeah, yeah. That that was that was the whole tryout, and I was like, well, that was garbage, you know. Like, so I ended up going to that show, and I ended up getting like just thrown in with the Briscoes, and we ended up wrestling Trent. In a three-on-one tornado handicap tag match against Trent Acid, yeah, which went remarkably well. Like just 
like 15 and 16 year old Briscoe brothers or whatever they were, sex 16 and 17 at that point, maybe. I don't even mm. like maybe that at that point. And yeah. it was like I, yeah, I couldn't have gone for the for, and I was 17 then. For the for the type of match that it was, it couldn't have gone any better. Nailed everything. It's perfect. Trent was very blown up mm-hmm. by the end. And he beat all of us. And that got me my spot. That tryout hurt that me match? more than anything else. Like, but the match <laughs> with the match with the Briscoes and Trent saved my it like got me a spot. That got me a spot at CZW. Nice. So that was like that was my first night there. Oh, did, <laughs> didn't I have a Chuck story? I had a Chuck story in there. A rock and Rebel story. Uh, no, I the, the only thing right. I remember, I think this is the first time I met Rock and Rebel. And <laughs> the only memory I have of of uh Chuck at this show that night is him in a towel in a hallway with a bunch of high schoolers fans. That I come to watch the show because I, I think the the locker room was just in the hallway or something like that. And I just remember oh, chucking yeah. a towel, just a towel, with his with his wang protruding <laughs> in a hallway <laughs> of high schoolers. It's a nice introduction to Rebel. Yeah, that was my that was my intro, and I was just like, that's. Nah. You like I told you and stepped nah. away from her. Nah. <laughs> probably not gonna probably not gonna like this guy too much either. No, I had heard <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh well, again, I had heard about Rock and Rebel from Glenn the Man Man from the Badlands, Glenn Osborne. All right. Working with him. So yeah, but this is this is a time when like a lot of us were coming in like wrestlers that were coming in for PCW, ECWA, and Jersey All Pro all at one time uh-huh. into CZW. So it was this big influx of up-and-coming talent at a time when, like, it, it was, I would say it was very fortuitous for John, and Kentner was really dumb for making that ultimatum. Mm, like, I, I think that was a bad, that was a bad move. We could have done both, you know. Um, yeah. And well, it was it was not too soon, not too long after that, that you started uh, being a trainer at the academy as well, right? Yeah. Like after, well, when did you guys start down there? I I was in Mantua. What's, in what's our timeline? What, what was the next yeah, match? Yeah, what was we, the next I'd match? Started. Let's just go through the timeline. The next, the I next did start, match well, did. what happened was I, st- I started training down there, like working out down there yeah. all the time. That's how that starts. So. And then in February, uh, it was the next month, you were wrestling Rocker, I think, right? Is that in Delaware? Uh, that was the three-way, yeah. Uh, crushing the competition. I don't know where it was. But it was uh, Rocker, was it and you, and, and, uh, and Dahmer. Yeah, I think it might have been a Froggies. Uh, if it's... I, th- I think I remember. No, wait. I think no, I no, no. That. It's Dahmer, I, me, you, and think... Jeff Rocker. That's in Sewell, I believe. That's in Sewell? Okay. Thank. What's the February? Because then you show? have that that's the February show. And then there was a there was two more February shows. Uh yeah, there one were was called Break on Through, where you and Dahmer uh, uh the Briscoes went over on you and Dahmer. Then there yep. was Destruction in Dover, which was uh the Briscoes and Ruckus going over you Dahmer and Rocker. And that was for all of February. Okay, yeah. So we were kind of all right. I got attached to Rocker, and I guess Dahmer. That that three way I remember, uh, because I liked I liked Dahmer, and I mm-hmm. I did not like Jeff Rocker. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> <laughs> what was, what How was badly did I, I? I would, I would, I had very little respect for the the wrestling abilities of Jeff Rocker. <laughs> yeah, we heard, we heard a lot about stuff. that. We we got it. We got a hold of his uh, one of his the best of wrestling, best of Jeff Rocker version one. 
VHS tape down to the old CZW school. You guys remember watching that? And he was, I don't remember. He was like, I don't remember. In the chair, like he was the Fonz. He's like, and he was like, oh yes, he was I like, do remember that. Welcome, okay. welcome to the best of Jeff Rocker, version one. <laughs> Why is it version one? Yeah, wouldn't it be volume? Wouldn't it be or... volume one? Maybe, maybe, you maybe volume, volume one. one. Yeah. The, be the best version. Okay, yeah. so the volume one. And, and we were like, we were like, what? Like, he's going to do a bunch more of these? <laughs> <laughs> Who's eager for the follow up? Well, well, there were legitimate love... reasons. There, there were legitimate reasons that I did not like Jeff Rocker. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't say, like, personality-wise, because I don't think I r really ever had a problem, like, a personality clash with him. Yeah. But I hated how he bumped. I He he was a cheat sheet, a major cheat sheet, which mm -hmm. w w uh, that was something that everybody talked about. You guys don't remember his... this? He, he, he'd write the entire thing on his on his wrist he tape? He would write his entire match out on his wrist tape. Yeah. The entire match. I remember that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which, yeah, how that. would you even, how could you at any <laughs> point in a match, first of all, first of all, you have to find your place. Like, yeah. because, and I'm not, this isn't hyperbole. I don't want anybody in the audience to think I'm exaggerating or embellishing this. The entire match <laughs> written in hieroglyphics like tiny like just the entire match written in shorthand eight. yeah yeah I, I it wasn't hieroglyphics no it was literally written out just written out just the whole <laughs> no like, no abbreviations nothing full no <laughs> full words his tape just went all okay. the way to his elbow down, that's two cross body arm. <laughs> that's two that's reason two right there's a okay. third reason. He did not like okay. catching anybody, but wouldn't say, hey, I'm not comfortable with catching you and not do the spot. He would yeah. agree to catch you or agree to catch somebody and then right. get out of dodge and just move out of the way and didn't want to get hurt, <laughs> which That's I awful. do not respect. Just say no, you don't want to catch you. Hey, I don't want to catch you on the dive. You know, <laughs> like I'm not comfortable doing that. But he, he wouldn't do it because he would you know, like because he would look like weak. So instead, what he would do is like go out there and like, eh, you know, and like everybody knew it. There was one yeah. match that we'll probably get to. It's at best of the best, the first best of best. So I'll save that for Jeff Rocker. So, but that was the first match that I met and worked with Dahmer, and I enjoyed working with him. Dahmer was cool. Yeah. I yeah. respected him. Yeah, you know what else? Is, I wonder what else happened then, man. Yeah, yeah, we we got all we got on right off the bat. Yeah, uh, and that well, that formed where like we a really good. So that's um, that was a solid. We're we're still in the in the very beginning of two thousand one. <laughs> February. I, wanna, I, I do want to skip ahead. Two? What the other no, two no, in what? February. Yeah. In February, uh, you worked. Uh, you and Dimer worked the Briscoes. And then you teamed okay. with Rocker against the Briscoes and Ruckus. Okay, yes. The one with Briscoes, was, that was the first time me and Dahmer teamed up, and that was a great tag team match. That was the yeah. first time I was like, wow, like, that really worked out. Like, everybody's timing was really good, and the match was yeah. really good. We were, working with, like, we were working with the Briscoes. Everything, like, clicked in that match with, mm -hmm. like, me and Dahmer. Like, as far as, like, that was the first time I was like, oh, okay, we're, like... I'm on the same page with this guy. Right. Like he's he's an old school trained pro, like I was, you know, and like no nonsense. Like I I do, we clicked. Like that was the first. I was like, oh, this, yeah. Like we clicked. Uh, like, everything worked. So yeah. and then the the six band. The only thing I remember about that is feeling really awful because I think I gave uh uh mark a minor concussion during that match oh damn with a leg drop off the top rope because it was a really low ceiling and i felt he he worked the whole match like we didn't know what the heck was going on and like i felt really bad after that yeah. sorry mark you probably never gonna listen to this but sorry anyway, so, <laughs> didn't mean to do that 
Uh, I do want to skip ahead a little bit because otherwise we'll be here all day. But uh, you did have your your first match with Nick Gage in CCW was uh, Ewan Dahmer against uh, Nick and Nate. Uh, I guess they were the Hate Club uh, back then. That was uh, April of 2001. Can we talk about that a little okay, bit? So, okay, so this is – we've gotten into the part where me and Dahmer are officially a tag team, I think, at this right. point. Like, like a, the three-way – and then the match with the Briscoes, like, and then I think, I think that's when uh, John was was called Dahmer and told him that uh, he was putting him with me as a tag team. And then I called like Dahmer, and I was like, "Hey, we want to meet." And Dahmer thought I wanted to meet up to fight or some shit because <laughs> he's a weirdo. They were like, "Why would I call you down to the school to fight because we're teaming up?" Weirdo. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> and I was just really happy too. because I was lost at that point, yeah. like with the gimmick. Like I was like, I don't, I did not know what, I had no idea <laughs> as to what would work. I was like, this was the gimmick I've done for the last couple of years. That was really successful for me and got me like places. And I came to CZW and it was not over, not over whatsoever. I couldn't really do it. It wasn't, it wasn't what they were looking for, and like, it, like. When he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna put you in the team with Dahmer," I was like, "Well, this is actually perfect because, like, we could tear it up in the tag team scene. I know I can work right. with this guy, you know, and be, be something special." How many times did you guys win the uh, tag titles? I know it was at least three, right? No, no, we only won them once. It was only we once, really. For him, we wrestled for him a few times. That first match, the first title shot we got was that match against Nikki and Nate. I was really mm-hmm. happy with that. Oh. This is a great match because that's uh, isn't that uh, the really crazy? What what was the name of that show? Uh, against Nikki and Nate. Let me see here. Was it? Yeah. Um, was that where, was un- that unbelievable. One, was that the one where? Don yeah, yeah. It was. The, it was the. Up? It was the one where we got kicked out of there. We got kicked out. I don't remember this. You don't yeah, remember this? Was, like, they did that. That. that it was like. Justice Payne and Justice Payne and Mondo Johnny Cashmere. Oh no no! no. Justice Payne and Kasai. and Mondo against Johnny Cashmere and June Kasai. Mm-hmm. That's right. Crazy Monkey. Yeah. Crazy yes, Mon- okay, it was nasty. It's one of the nastiest ultra violent death matches ever. Like like that was well that sold. I mean, you know, like how how much did we put that out there? That that was insane. That was a crazy match. But I remember that match that night. Dahmer had a bad shoulder. And he was very pissy. And we oh oh, uh, that's when uh, Big Max Max started uh, managing us too. That was the first night he managed us. He brought us into his stable. So uh, Rob yeah, was man- uh, Big Max Max was managing me and Dahmer and Wife Beaver. The big deals okay. or whatever the heck. <laughs> 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 the big deals. Um, anyway, that was, match was, that was great. April. I gave, I gave uh, that match was awesome. I gave Nate a black eye. In that match with a palm strike. Mm-hmm. Remember doing that? And you, you couldn't tell I, that match. I, I, I was that's still that. one of my favorite tag team matches. Gotcha. Just looking down the. Uh... Got a lot of three-way tags, four-way tags, elimination tags, six-person oh, tags. Wait, we got, we got, we got to, we got to come back to that match for a second because there's a lot of okay. things that have, there was with Dahmer. I have Dahmer stories with that match. So Dahmer had a okay. had a busted up shoulder, right? Okay, and uh, he was really pissy. And do you? Oh, this is when Dahmer before Dahmer uh, had had a. Had a awesome smile. Had great teeth. Awesome smile. Pretty right. good teeth. But pretty good teeth. Yeah. Dahmer. All right. Yeah. So we had the match. Dahmer. Dahmer. Dahmer asked that they. Pretty good teeth, Dahmer. <laughs> He's really yeah, pissy Dahmer about his famously, shoulder. Yeah. Famously and, didn't have great teeth. <laughs> he asked. He asked them to take care of him and not mess up his shoulder. 
Well, at one point, I don't know why he agreed to take this, but uh, they gave him the one arms, you know, like sky high like, mm. thing that he used to do. That was really nasty looking. We planted Dahmer right on his shoulder. Dahmer, like you can go back and watch the video if you, if, you, if anybody has unf unbelievable. Watch Dahmer get planted directly on his taped up pant shoulder, and he starts cursing more than I've ever heard him curse in my entire life. <laughs> You're like, you fucking yeah, motherfucker, son of a bitch, fucking you know, blah, blah. Like I was just like, god damn. And <laughs> we got and in the back. Took, and like, he took a double shoulder tackle from. He took a double shoulder tackle from the hate club, and he was yeah. like, Whoa! <laughs> so we get to the locker room. Oh, and he's not only has his shoulder gotten he like he like did he get dropped right on his like planted right on his shoulder by Nate Hatred. Who was probably not happy that I had blackened his eye. Right. Like minutes <laughs> earlier. <laughs> it might not have even been a receipt for what I did. <laughs> Was but he seat. also, he also like caught. He must have caught like a punch or a kick or something in the mouth, in the mouth, and and like bloodied his mouth or jacked up his 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 uh, bad teeth. And we were in the yeah. we were in the bathroom, and he's in the mirror, and he's like, he is so. I I don't think I've ever seen Dobber so. Well, no way, that's not true. I did see him at angry or one other time, but I've never seen him like the till this point. I hadn't seen him this angry. He's in there. He's just. He's looking in the mirror. And it's me and Smacker standing there, and it's like just Dobber going on. He's like, hey, like fucked up my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and Big Max Matt said the meanest, probably funniest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> he had that big, big Max Max smile on his face, like. Yeah. Oh well, uh, John, it's not like you had a million dollar smile anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, smack! Oh. <laughs> what, what did Dahmer say to that? He just he just kept he just kept like like messing with his teeth, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh man! So yeah, you, um, you finished out uh, 2001 with uh, where are we at here? 2001 uh, was uh, Cage of Death three with you and uh, Dahmer against uh, Chris Cash and GQ and Chris Styles and Ian Knox. That was the big. Uh, oh, the so big we're move. into we're into the, the arena. That's the arena. Man, you yeah. you skipped so many things. I do you want do you really want me to sit here and go through your entire career? What are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? I you want to go to, match by match? Think, I mean, uh, I, I got work in the morning. <laughs> what time is it? Let's we've been doing this for an hour. Oh, have we? <laughs> it's it's been almost an hour now. Yeah. Why don't we just do? Why don't we just wrap up and we'll continue? You want to do a part two? Yeah. We can do that. Yeah, Absolutely. well, I want to get into. I want to go through it so we get into where you guys come in, and that's kind of kind of yeah. what I was going for. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, all right. We 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 ended with your first match with uh with Nikki and Nate, and uh, we can pick right up because I think that is it the next match, or it's very close where uh you you get into my first match in CCW with uh me and you, uh, it was me versus you as Barcam. We're yes. getting to that pretty soon. It's easy to let's, be take uh, one. Let's uh, like ne uh, next time we come back, let's let's get like the whole cards, so we can kind of. There is so much stuff we're missing, and it's I can't think of all the other matches that were going on, and I can comment on like stuff that was going on behind the scenes because there was like so much that happened. I moved down there. John bought me a car. The Jesus promo. Uh, I moved in Jesus with Cash. Promo. Yeah. Uh, but we were, there was so much politics going on, the stuff with XBW, I was going to business meetings with John, which was funny, uh, business meetings with John Zandig. 
<laughs> I'd, I'd love to hear these stories. Yeah, oh, Absolutely. these are great. We got all your guys' like stories with John where I would just torture you by sending you to <laughs> agitate John for no reason. That was more Corey than me. You didn't do too much with me. <laughs> it was more Corey. Oh, I, I, I think it was. I think it was more Corey because I, I think I probably would have figured John might have hit you if I told you to go over <laughs> no, there and no, no. Like, mess him with him. Like he wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna punch sixteen-year-old Corey Castle. Like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it was the fact that he already just didn't like me. Like I was like. Yeah. like I was too, I was too innocent. He liked, he liked hanging out with kids who were like from the wrong side of the track. Like his son was like right. the little wrong side of the tracks guy. And the tough and kids. He was, right. And he was like friends with, um, he was friends with, um, Cash and Cash and George and stuff. Yeah. John didn't, uh, John didn't I mean, really. George, I mean, George wasn't up in the circle. Hmm. John didn't really like people. <laughs> he had people that he tolerated people more he than others. Liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's more of an accurate description of like, yeah. like. Well, you, if you if you made John laugh too, if you could make John laugh, like, like, well, how often did you see John laugh? So if you could make yeah, John laugh, laugh, and it, like, it, like he wasn't a, he wasn't a. I don't, I don't think I ever remember John just laughing out loud, like a big laugh. Do you ever remember no. John like giving a big laugh? You know, he give no. he give like these little like like, <laughs> I think, like I a little think like only, like, <laughs> like it's the meanest. I can ever remember him having was at his own jokes. I don't yeah. ever remember him ever <laughs> laughing at anything else. Yeah, he 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 kind of gave you like a it'd be it'd be kind of a grunting chuckle kind of thing or like a like a. <laughs> A corner turn, yeah. Smile, just like like one corner <laughs> yeah. of his mouth smile, yeah. and that was John yeah. laughing, you know, kind of laughing. So, less, so yeah. if you could make him, if you could, if you could pop John, which like yeah. you'd have to almost recognize it because I always, I always mess around with John, like all the time. Yeah. Like, wait, oh, we we can talk about those too. The Jesus promo, which is hilarious. I wanted. Oh, definitely yeah. deep dive into the origins of the Jesus promo. There are there are, there are questions that must be answered. As far as <laughs> we might have to bring in, oh, I want to bring in uh, Robbie Marino. We should see oh, if yeah, Robbie definitely. Marino, and, like Nick Burke, want to come in on this. We should just invite a bunch Absolutely. of people in. Yeah, why not? Why not? We can totally do that. <laughs> All right, well, we'll wrap it up here, and then we'll pick it up again, because uh, this is fun. This is it a is. little trip down this memory lane and uh, chatting up some uh, some CZW alum and, and getting some behind-the-scenes stories from uh, from way back in the day. Maybe next yeah. time I won't be on vacation. Yes. <laughs> and we'll have a proper microphone and everything in front yes. of you. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah, right, yeah, great. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time with, uh, with Eddie Valentine and some more CZW stories. So... Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. Uh, 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 muscle.